Split transactions are one of my favorite features of Quicken. Splits allow you to take a single transaction and break the total amount up between two or more categories. To see how this can be useful, let's take a look at a few examples. In my first example, here's a utility bill from the city. This bill includes charges for water, electric, and sewer. By splitting the transaction, I can indicate the different amounts that go into each respective category. Notice that I also tag the item to show which property for which the charges apply to. I also use the memo field to show energy usage. Here is a more complex example from when I went to the grocery store. Notice how I got $20 cash back and made that a transfer to my cash account, also known as my wallet. Then I break out the rest of the bill for the other various categories and add memos as needed. I also had a gift card to use, so I include that to show the offset amount. That way, my true spending for the respective category remains accurate. I could go on giving examples, but the uses are pretty much limitless. If you are familiar with the Paycheck or Loan Amortization Wizards and other versions of Quicken, you will quickly realize that there were mere complex front ends to create a simple split transaction. I really encourage people to learn how to set up splits manually as it really isn't all that difficult. Moreover, you have far more control to tailor things to your specific needs. No wizard will allow such a level of personal customization. Now, before I go further, I think it would be wise to explain how to create a split and the different terms we use. If you have an existing transaction you entered or downloaded, simply select it and click on the split icon or use shift command n is the keyboard shortcut. I'm going to cancel out of this for now. Let's instead create a new transaction. I like keyboard shortcuts so I'll use command n. I'll tab over and enter the uh, payee. Let's we'll put use big box for this. And in the same fashion I can just go down and click on split or hit shift command n. When you have a split the top line is what we refer to as the parent line. All the subordinate split lines are referred to as child lines or children. All the children must add up to the total of the parent. You can see the parent amount in two spots, above the child amounts or in the parent line. One thing to note from users coming from Quicken Essentials, in Essentials the split lines would actually mirror your column headers. So if you resize things or move let's say a column over to, some, to another uh, spot in your register, everything would move around. But in 2015 you're not going to see that because it was actually becoming very problematic to do that. So all these fields are fixed and you can't resize them and you're going to have that single amount field. But in reality you're not going to really have any problem with that but I just wanted to point it out. The split behavior logic has changed from other versions of Quicken and these changes might be the reason why you're watching this video. To help clear things up there are three distinct use cases that the program follows. Understanding what is going on will really help you use splits to your advantage. So let's take a look at how things work. In the first use case, if you manually enter all your children, the total will be that for all the sum of the child lines. Let's say $25 right here. And cat 2, that's $50. You'll see that the total parent line is now $75. Now in the second scenario, let's say I've got an existing or a scheduled transaction and I go in and I change the first child. Let's just use $50 right here. You'll see that it'll spawn another separate child that you can categorize and this used to be the remainder in Quicken Essentials but it actually creates a new child line that you have to categorize in 2015. One thing to remember is that this second use case gets triggered by editing the first child line. That remainder will pop up and it will continue to update as you edit other children. So if you have to change more than one child line, you can do so. The third use case is probably the most controversial and it's either very useful or very annoying depending on your use. Let's say I've got this transaction here for the grocery store and I go in to edit it and I'm going to create a split transaction. Let's say I want to break this up for pet care because I bought some dog food on there and if I enter this amount it's going to take it away from the first split line. 
that's great for a lot of people who download transactions and want to take stuff away from the first split. The key to remember here is that in the second use case, editing the first child added a remainder line that you could categorize. In the third use case, Editing any other child line but the first will modify the first child line. Note the difference as I modify the transaction I used earlier in this video. Notice how the first child line has now been updated. Many users appreciate the new behavior, but probably the biggest drawback is the lack of the update total button. But I think you can manage without it. One last thing I'd like to show you is if you create a new transaction and quick fill kicks in, Let's say I go to the grocery store, and it, create, it creates all the split lines, and I just want a single parent line. Sure, I could manually click on these little minus signs to reduce all the childs, but you can just click on clear all splits, and that will reduce it to a single line transaction, and you won't have a split transaction anymore. That sums things up for this tutorial. I realize some longer term users might find the changes a bit jarring, but once you understand how they now work, you'll quickly learn how to use these changes to your benefit.